How many are welcoming the speaker this evening? Yes, you are welcome uh, to bring the word from heaven this evening. Good evening. Happy Sunday. Happy uh, Monday breaking. Thank you. I know you are amazed, eh? <laughs> yes, I'm Joshua Menya in type. <laughs> the anti type is uh, on the way coming. I know most of the people, when they see me standing, they usually think of uh, prophecy and uh, medical missionary. But uh, today, I would like us to have a view of what God said, let us make man. Let us make man. But before that, I'd like to begin with a question. I'd like to begin with a question of which I'm going to ask all of us. And I may pick some few individuals to answer it out. So, uh, this question asked, if this evening you are asked to choose any person in this world whom you will have breakfast with, whom will you choose? Yani ungechaguliwa leo, ukue na breakfast, ama you just have a spend a breakfast with anybody in this world, whom would you choose and why? Simele swali. Whom would you choose and why? Um, passing around to gather the views of the people. If, I repeat the question, if you are given a chance to choose a person in this world whom you will go for bref breakfast with, whom would you choose? Okay. I begin uh, with the leader of the flock. Uh, praise God. Uh, swali ni ngumu sina jibu but wacha ni jaribu kujibu um, mtu ambaye ningeweza kumchagua <laughs> okay um, it's my 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 why are you laughing <laughs> The only person, maybe, <laughs> you realize that when God was creating, I created man, and after that, <laughs> wait, I am explaining. He asked the person and the reason. So let me give the reason, then I give the person. He caused a deep sleep to the man, and he removed a rib part of the rib and you realize that he he created a help meet him so the best person i can choose to have breakfast with is the one who is part of me i think uh <laughs> thank you that is his version i come uh, to the next person who will uh, give me at least an answer it's your own personal choice yeah God is good. All the time. Okay, for me, I will choose my 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 man. Amen. Okay, I think I love a last quest. Uh, whom would you choose. Thank you. Kasera. Yes. God is good. Me, I will choose Elder Enoch Kiprono. Because we will be sharing Bible verses at the same time. <laughs> Thank you. So for the gender to be equal, uh, yes, whom would you choose? Yeah. Okay, for me, I'll, 
choose that best friend of mine. Uh, yeah. Good. <laughs> best friend of us. You will realize all of us have different choices, right? I know some of us maybe would have reserved and, and then said maybe it is your mother. Some would have reserved and said maybe it is your father. And some of them maybe as uh, Masinde plays it, it might be Putni. But uh, there is a question you may ponder upon yourself even as we continue. So let us have a word of prayer even uh, as we begin. So we pray. Everlasting, ever loving Father, we do come before thy throne this very moment. We do say thank you for this Father that you have brought us. Within our minds we have so many thoughts and even many conclusions. But I pray may you thwart all of them so that may your, your word may rest upon our minds. Just use me as a vessel and may your proper care be upon us. With the speaker, how I pray that may you enable him in his journey so that he may reach safely. And much more, let your will be done this evening. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so we are going to look at the book of First Corinthians 13, 11. First Corinthians 13, verses 11. There's something that we want to look at there. Aha. Huh? Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Mm hmm. Aha. Aha. Santi, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I ate as a child, I drank as a child, I did everything that I did as who? As a child. But right now, uh, when I've become a man, I did what I did put away childish things. I remember uh, when we were young, we used to do everything in a different way. That is, kama uh, ni kucheza, we used to just play, yeah? Kitu ilikuwa na tutuwa kucheza ilikuwa nini? Giza. Ama mkiko sana, and then after you have uh, gone aside from one another, unambiwa toka game yangu. And then after that, maybe some few minutes, unambiwa ningizeni two game, and then you still go back to the game. And then after that, once we grew up, in fact, to kill our dog, we never knew the differences between sexes, right? Yeah, we just used to mingle. All of us, we just used to mingle. And then as we grew up, slowly by slowly, we began realizing ourselves. That is the moment now we began saying that this one is a boy and this one is a, is a girl. And I remember all of us have the, that experience in class 5, class 6, beginning from classes 4. When uh, we were sitting on a locker, yeah? Uh, no, no, no. It was a desk. And then we were placed there. Where we were hapa, hapa, hapa. And our teacher used to say that uh, And then vijana wawili msichana katikati. Those were the things that used to happen. And that time, we used to say to ourselves like, Mimi stai kukapo. I don't really want to sit there. And so we were opting for a different thing. So when we were young, we used to understand things as children. We used to think as children. But right now, we have become bigger men. And once we have become bigger men, we put away the childish things. And how do we put away the childish things? As you learn psychology, you will realize that there is a different uh, uh, production of hormones. Yeah? To the ladies, we have the progesterone. And then we have the oestrogen. And also to the men, we have the testosterone, which make you to become a man, which makes a man to become a lady. And which increase the productivity of the body so that we may become whom we are. And so, we have become as big men. And as we have become as big men, we realize there is an affection towards something. Eh? We have become like magnets. And once a magnet, you know there is a North Pole and there is a South Pole. And once there is a North Pole and there is a South Pole, you know there is a force of attraction. And once there is a force of attraction, this force should, uh, most of the time, is never ignored. Is never ignored. Is never ignored. And that is why Solomon, with his all his wisdom, wrote these words. Let's go to the book of Solomon, uh, Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 5. Songs of Solomon 2 5. Songs of Solomon 2 5. Aha. Uh -huh. Stay me with flagons. Aha. Uh -huh. Comfort me with apples. Aha. Uh -huh. For I am sick of love. Exactly. 
Solomon writes by saying, Stay me with the flagons. Uh -huh. Comfort me with the apples. For I am sick of love. And I know this word usually never misused it while you were uh, in a primary school. I remember when you were primary school and anybody said something concerning love, we used to shy away. Like, ah, what has this person said? That is what we used to do. Hmm? Okay, tu kidiana mesema na kupenda. That word. That word alone. I recall there's a time you were in class 5 and uh, there's this Muslim friend of mine. He's called uh, Abdinur. Abdinur actually felt like he's loving a certain lady. And then uh, he just decided that I cannot keep this in my heart. So once the CRI teacher had taught about the fruits of the Holy Spirit and uh, the teacher left, he just stood at the back of the classroom and said, and so the lady just ran to the teacher and said, this one want to spoil my life. Yeah. <laughs> this one want to spoil my life. And that guy was beaten thoroughly. And after being beaten thoroughly, he still came to class and wrote a letter still. And he wrote a letter and uh, you know the English, the broken English that we usually used in, uh, in our primary school. So like uh, Sharon did, 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 did that. And then now he came to the council so that the letter might be approved. Hmm? So, and then you we were like, eh, you've written something better. So he said, so he waited when the lady went for a for, uh, break. The lady went for a break and then we told him, now you may go to that part and then you just place it. So the next lesson was a mathematics lesson. And so we told him, yeke kwa kitabu ya math. So he just placed in the mathematics book and uh, we just kept quiet. So the rest of the story is that uh, this lady, once we reached class 8, she did the vice versa. <laughs> Very funny. Now she's the one who was chasing after the guy. But the guy was no longer there. That is, Solomon says, stay with me, flagons. Comfort me with the apples, for I am sick of love. So there are some points I would like us to bring there, uh, to elucidate there. We have the word flagons. As I went into my dictionary and tried to look at the word flagons, I realized these are vessels. Yeah? You understand the vessels? These are vessels which I used to put wine. These are vessels which I used to put anything or any drink. And so stay with me. I can place there the word vessels. Comfort me with the apples. You know how expensive an apple is, right? Yeah, do you usually just eat an apple anyhow? No, you just don't buy an apple anyhow. And exactly an organic apple. Leave alone this apple that is currently nowadays. But an organic apple, you don't just get it easily. And so he says that, comfort me with apples. Something expensive. Something that I feel like I'm loved. And then he continues further by saying, for I am sick of love. I am sick of love. So we would like to look much more on the part of sick of love. You might be sick of love in a positive dimension. You might be sick of love in the negative dimension. And today, we would like to look at this uh, part of for I am sick of love. And we will get some uh, light from the scriptures themselves and also from the spirit of prophecy so that we may get a better understanding of what Solomon meant and to verify the words of Solomon. Let us go to the book, uh, that is the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 2, verses 20. Genesis 2, 20. This is the part of creation. And God saw something that needs us to prove. Uh -huh. Genesis 2, 20. Genesis 2, 20. Uh -huh. It says, mm -hmm. And Adam uh -huh. gave names to all cattle and to the fall of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. Thank you. Up to there and then we will continue. So God is creating here. And he said as you uh, look at the book of Genesis 1. He says let us. Uh, Genesis 2 sorry. He says let us make man in our own image. In our own likeness. So that he may rule over the field. And everything that is there. And so God took dust. He molded the dust and then he breathed on this uh, dust the breath of life. And then that dust became a living soul. And after it became a living soul, God gave it a task. 
like uh, every person is given a task in one way or the other. You may come to class and then you're given this task, all the other things. So God gave this man a task. He already created a job opportunity for him before he created him. And that is why I, I really love uh, the words of a uh, preacher uh, by the name uh, uh, C.D. Brooks. That is, before God created you, he defined work for you. And so you need to claim it. Yeah? When you're in the school, you should tell God, God, you never created us without a purpose. Hence, there is work for us that you have created us for. So show us the work. And so God prepared work, a field to work, before he created Adam. And when he created him, Adam did all that he did. He named all the organism. Yeah? He named all the organism. The way we usually continue naming everything. Like uh, when I came here in first year, I just realized that uh, the bed bugs are usually called the comrades. So it was Osteli E, whereby uh, we just went and then one of us told us, eh, hey, kuna comrade wengi. So I thought that these guys, uh, it seems like they are given so many roommates. So I went to verify, Kwani, these rooms ni kubwaje kuliko Hostel C. So when I went there, I just realized there are only four uh, beds. That is uh, double decker and a double decker. So I was like, how many comrades are here? And then now the person I can each know can be a comrades but any bed bug. Kunguni. Eh. And I was like, okay, thank you for the new knowledge. So Adam named all the organisms. In fact, he, a cow passed by, he named it this one should be a cow. And then another one passed by, he said this one should be an octopus, this one should be this, this one should be this. And once he finished naming all these things, it remained that he was alone. He tried to look all aside and uh, he realized that uh, there's nobody who is like me. Nobody who is like me. Aha. Uh -huh. So, Adam, uh, but for Adam, there was not found and help it for him. May we continue verses 22? Verse number 22. Aha. Uh -huh. And the rib which uh, the Lord... Go to 21. 21. Aha. Uh -huh. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Aha. Uh -huh. And he slept. Mm -hmm. And he took one of his ribs. Aha. Uh -huh. And closed up the flesh instead thereof. Thank you. Up to there. So, God did... He saw that he, uh, Adam never had anybody to look like him. So he looked for his help meet. And I would like to elucidate the word like help meet. It is not a help meet, but it's a help meet something. And he did something. He removed the rib from the side of who? Of Adam. From the side of Adam. That means that, what does it mean? Why did he take a bone from the head? Why did he take a bone from the feet? Why did he take a bone from the hand? But he only did what? Took it from beside from beside who beside adam and he took one of the ribs and we understand that at the center of the rib that is where we have the breathing system the heart and also what we can find the stomach just near there we can find what other things do we find actually near the ribs or that is enclosed by the ribs okay all those organs that are enclosed by the rib so it simply mean that god took somebody who will assist adam who will not just be like uh, for a man, uh, you are having a lady and then you can step on her. Mm -mm. He just took somebody beside the rib so that he can be a help meet. Not that you can be above him nor below him, but so that you can be assist one another. Aha. After that one, he did what? And closed up the flesh instead thereof. Why didn't God bring another bone and fix it there? Why didn't he create another person from dust? In fact, he had the opportunity, didn't he? Were the material lacking? The materials were never lacking. They were readily available. He would just mold and then breathe on the nostril. And then he will bring out who? Eve. But what he did, he took from Adam's part. Remember, as we have read in the book of Songs of Solomon, he said that I am sick of what? Love. While I was looking at the meaning of the word sick, as I was looking at the meaning of the word sick, it simply means mentally unstable. I took that point. I took the second meaning of it. Mentally unstable. And so, Solomon was simply meaning I am sick because I'm mentally what? Unstable. 
And that is the reason why you will realize a man uh, can actually write a long paragraph so that he can be mentally stable. Right? Mentally stable. So, the word sick, as used there, just simply means mentally unstable. And so, all of us, in one way or the other, we are mentally unstable for what? For love. How are we mentally unstable for love? Let us continue. The book is uh, Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Begin from verses uh, 4. Genesis 3, 4. Uh -huh. And the serpent said unto the woman, mm -hmm. You shall not surely die. Uh -huh. uh, verses 5. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Uh -huh. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did it, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did it. Thank you. I would like for us to elucidate this uh, text in the scripture. It says that, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, where was Eve? Where, where was Adam when Eve just went aside? Where was he? Maybe he was tending something there, right? And so when he was tending something, Eve came and looked at the tree. She just looked at the tree. And so many men, we usually go astray because of looking at the tree. We just look at the tree and we go astray. We just look at the tree. We just see the tree passing and uh, we pass with it. We just escort it from where it began up to the very end. Eve saw, the woman saw that the tree was good for food. We men usually just look physically and you see this tree is good for food. But we never take a deeper keen interest to understand what kind of food it is. Aha! And that it was pleasant to the eyes. Is indeed pleasing to the eyes? Put any advertisement while there is a lady passing by displayed. Men will follow the advertisement until the very end. Men, am I lying? Yeah? <laughs> am I lying? No, simply I'm not lying. You will follow it. Yeah? Once once it pops, and then you will be like, uh -huh, let me see the next act. Anyway, pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make man wise. Uh, make one wise. When a gent passes with a very good damsel, you will hear a man praising, eh? And you will chagua kitu moto. Those are the praises that do what? Will follow by. And so, uh, do desired, make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. So, what did Eve become? She became a tempter. Remember, we are trying to build the topic that is sick of love. Sick of love. Aha. So once we go back before we reach verses uh, 6, verses 5, you will realize that the serpent comes and speaks to the what? To the lady. And so many ladies are driven by words. Once the words flow, they become captivated. Once the song of diamonds just sinks there, and then you are sent into, into your inbox and told that uh, this, is, this one is your dedix. This is my dedication to you. The lady goes flabiant and says, wow. The heart is captivated because of what? Because of the words that were said there. I would like us to go to the spirit of prophecy so that we may understand. Sick of love. What does it simply mean? The book that is the story of redemption. Story of redemption. Uh, pages 32, paragraph 2. Story of redemption. Pages 32, paragraph 2. So that we can understand what transpired in between uh, Eve and Adam taking the fruit. There is something that took place there. Story of Redemption 32 paragraph 2. It says uh -huh. Eve unconsciously at first separated from her husband in her employment. Thank you. Eve at first separated from her husband and we saw it was sick for love. So she was mentally unstable. Was she mentally unstable? Yes. Once you are mentally unstable you may be yoked 
with a different kind of a thing. So she was mentally unstable. Continue. Uh, when she became aware of the fact, mm -hmm. she felt that there might be danger. Mm -hmm. But again, she thought herself secure, even if she did not remain close by the side of her, hus of her husband. Thank you. She thought that this, she's very wise. She can stay beside her. Uh, she can stay away from her husband. But the moment she stayed away from her husband, that is the moment she realized I'm mentally what? Unstable. And she was sick for love. She was seeking something. Uh -huh. It progresses by saying she had wisdom uh -huh. and strength to know, if, to know if evil came and to meet it. These the angels had cautioned her not to do. Mm -hmm. Eve found herself gazing with mingled curiosity mm -hmm. and admiration upon the fruit of the forbidden tree. Mm -hmm. She saw it. Uh, she saw it was very lovely, and and was reasoning with herself why God had so decidedly prohibited their eating or touching it. Thank you. Up to there, she was wondering, like, why did God forbid people to do what to eat of this tree? It just looks so good. It just looks so just it is just good. Mbona Mungu bwana anazuia mimi nisikule hiki kitu? Why? Yeah? He was reasoning in his mentality like mbona bana? Why should I take a lot of time? Why? Mbona Mungu bwana hiki kitu si ni kukula tu alafu story imeisha. It is just a matter of eating and the story is done. The way many of us usually say, I'm a last sin. Senior. So, Eve just thought of that. And after thinking of that, she just did take the fruit and ate it. Continue, my brother. Now was Satan's opportunity. It was Satan's opportunity. The moment we mingle with the sin, that is the moment now the devil do what? Comes in. Remember, the devil never reads our mind. He never reads our mind. It is only the actions we do that he, he does what? He reads. Once we do something today, uh, he just brings something that entices us. So that when the moment we have been enticed, now he realizes that this is the opportunity. Remember, he has been wise for more than 6,000 years. For about 6,000 years. He has been existing. Sorry for using C. He has been existing. Before even Adam and Eve were created, he was there. When Adam and Eve were created, he was there looking at how creation was taking place. And so, he is more wise. In the book Last Day Event, he says that uh, he has studied the laboratories of nature. If he has studied the laboratories of nature, why can't he study the emotions of the people? And so the devil realized that I can use this opportunity to get to Eve. Remember, we are building the topic, sick of what? Sick of love. And so, when he did that, what happened? Let us go to uh, still the same book, Story of Redemption 33, paragraph 1. Pages 33, paragraph 1. Uh -huh. uh, it says, mm -hmm. Eve's curiosity uh -huh. was aroused. Instead of fleeing from the spot, she listened to hear a serpent talk. Thank you. Instead of fleeing... He, she just stayed there to listen to the serpent talk. Most of the time we never flee. We just stay there and listen. Sick of love. Sick of love. We just stay there and listen. We just listen and listen. And what happens? Uh, 36 paragraph 2. 36 paragraph 2. The same book that is story of redemption. Uh -huh. It says... Mm -hmm. Adam regretted that Eve had left his side. Uh -huh. But now the deed was done. Mm -hmm. He must be separated from her whose society he had loved so well. Uh -huh. How could he have uh, how could he have could he have it thus? Uh -huh. His love for his love for Eve was strong. Thank you. His love for Eve was done what? Was strong. This is where the sick for love comes in. Adam was thinking like, ah, Eve is my favorite person. God created for me Eve. He was looking and seeing like, there is no other person. There is nothing in this world that can be compared to who? To Eve. He saw like, if Eve is removed from my life, 
I love no other person. The same thing we usually look, look for today. We see that the thing that we love most, if it is removed from our life, we will never exist. And we lose the trust to who? To God. We lose our trust from God. And because Adam was sick for love, that is Eve's love, and that's why the spirit of prophecy writes by saying, Adam was so deep and strong in love with who? With Eve. And so the moment is so that if Eve is separated from me, worst thing will happen. Like I love no other person. That story behind. Let us get another story from the scripture so that we can understand seek for love. That is the book of Second Samuel, Second Samuel thirteen. Second Samuel thirteen, beginning from verses one. Second Samuel chapter thirteen, the verses number one. Aha. Uh -huh. And it came to pass mm -hmm. after this that Absalom Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister mm -hmm. whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And, Am and Ammon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister, Tamar. For she was a virgin. And Ammon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. Thank you. Uh, you may put the previous one. So this is a story of Amnon and Absalom. Not Absalom, yeah. Ammon. Amnon... She had a very fair sister. Like nowadays, we usually just say, it is my cousin, right? And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. Tamar, when the Bible writes, she was beautiful, she was beautiful. Amen? She was beautiful to look at. There's this Tamar. Mm -hmm. uh, and Amnon, the son of David, loved her. This is what we call love at first sight. How many usually had love at first sight? Love at first sight? Thank you, my brother, for being honest. We usually have those people who are love at first sight. You just look at a person and you say, Hey, hey. Ah. Anyway, it happens. So, these are uh, the brother Amnon. So, like, I cannot do without this lady. I cannot do without this lady. Amon understood the scriptures. He understood that it is not good for you to have an affection with your sister. It is not good. He realized uh, he knew these stuff. But he never took that one into mind. Because he was sick for love. He never took it like it was really at something that needs to be looked at. So he just fell in love with Tama. And he could do anything to what? To her. This is sick for love. You can do anything. I can remember there is a song that usually uh, once I was, uh, those days uh, in high school, uh, those days in high school, uh, we usually uh, sang a song, uh, not we sang, but a song was sung that I can move, I can swim the oceans for you, I can cross the rivers, not cross the rivers. So we, I climb mountains for you, just to seek you. Hey, my friend, <laughs> come on swimming pool, pekeaki when I drown. Sembuse <laughs> ocean. How can you see in the whole ocean for this person? Much more, I love what Ray Kesis was actually saying that uh, he was actually saying that uh, uh, this is a person who usually writes a, a letter to you, that uh, come rain, uh, come what, I'll just pass through it to reach you. But again, when it comes at the end of it, he says, I will come by if it will never rain. You know, it is something that we try to do anything for her. I can remember my friend who was called, uh, that is in uh, uh, primary school. Okay, in primary school, uh, if you have never had an experience, I'm very sorry. In a primary school, I had my friend by the name Stephen. And uh, this Stephen, uh, our school was here. And then there was another school the other side. So it was just a fence. A fence and then you reach the other side. And so this guy decided like I want to surprise my lady by doing something. It was four in the evening and uh, it was raining very heavily. And as it was raining very heavily, you realize the way it's uh, muddy and uh, and all that stuff. And so, 
he just did this he just walked in the rain he walked in the rain and uh reached over the fence over the fence there is the class where this lady usually dwells uh it is their class and so this guy of ours who is called Stephen, <laughs> shouted the name of the lady loudly and said just look at what i have done i've been raided on just because of you <laughs> i've been raided on just because of you kindly may you just accept uh my love and so they progressed recently i had they left one another but it is because of sick of what sick of love he did anything to this lady this is amnon did anything to this lady what happened next uh, verses 3 verse number 3 aha uh -huh. but amnon had a friend whose name was jonadab aha uh -huh. the son of she uh, shimia aha uh -huh. david's brother aha uh -huh. and jonadab was a very subtle man mm -hmm. and he said unto him why art thou being the king's son lean from day to day wilt thou will thou not tell me and ammon said unto him aha uh -huh. i love tamar my brother absalom's sister aha uh -huh. and and jonadab said unto him uh -huh. lay thee down on your bed and make th thyself sick uh -huh. and when thy father cometh to see thee to see thee uh -huh. say unto him i pray thee let my sister tamar come and give me meat and dress to the and dress the meat in my sight that i may see it and eat it at her hand up to there first of all so these amnon he had a very good friend he is called uh, jonadab as many of us usually have friends and so eh, jonadab was actually looking at how this man behaves eh? looked at this how this man behaves and uh, he realized eh banandume leo it seems like umekasirika what's up kuna kitu inanisumbua nini ni inakusumbua bana just share hmm? in fact i can realize he said a problem shared is a problem half solved a problem shared is also sasa shida ni gani inakusumbua ah uh, amnon akaamua acha afungue nini afungue roho akamwambia by the way unaonanga tama and i can recall if this one is the trio and we are discussing all these things unaonanga tama nasema ya yeah, i know tama eh wili demo na konga ameweza ndio huyo ndio huyo ndio huyo that one umeshindwa kumpata and then the guy is like eh hey, bana ni ngumu ni ngumu nimejaribu mistari wapi inagonga ndipo she knows how to say no nimejaribu everything in fact hata kwa public i can go and then play with my keyboard play i have tried everything if i was a chorister i would stand here and then sing yeah i am singing i'm looking directly at her and singing ah, so that she can see how i do what i do sing if it is when i'm representing uh, i'm teaching uh, the sabbath school i usually just stand and teach it very well I try to gather that English ile uko ndani and try to speak it so that she can get it but she's not getting anything she's not getting any closer Dafanya nini Jonadab uh, Amnon was very sick for love he was very sick and now he's saying what should I do and Jonadab is telling him bro bro geti chini nikwambie just sit down I tell you do this jifanye msome jifanye tu ume ah uh, wewe ni mgonjwa jifanye tu wewe ni mgonjwa unajua dadu wako atakuja kucheki na ikam kucheki mwambie we are very sick and somebody who is sick lazima afanye nini shughulikiwe i remember once we were young <laughs> we never drank soda anyhowly atukua tunakunywa soda anyhowly so <laughs> we used to have a trick with my brother if you are sick that is the moment you will be given a soda na ilikuwa sprite stony ama something so we used to play in uh, in uh, in parts my brother fell sick this month i fell sick the other month sick this month so he fell sick and then i would see him wata kula nini usikia una appetite kabisa sina uletewe nini <laughs> bring me a soda wow anaenda analetewa soda na mkate and once he is brought soda with mkate 
lazima anibakishie cuz uh, next time he will demand from me and so this is something we used to do and then our father and mother realized oh kila mwezi ya mwezi kwa mgonjwa you are alternating so they decided like the next time you become sick you will eat ugali na kama utaki kukula kanja so they did that and then the next time they realized it was a trick and they never did anything so this is something that happened here so he knew like when you become so sick what will happen your dad will come and see you and anything you say will be done unto you and so Jonadab advised this person that is Amnon and told him your dad when he comes tell him that uh, yes you need only tama to bring you food only tama to bring you food ukileta chakula na mtu mwingine ni kama aingi it is only ha ah, he was very sick for love very sick and he did anything to find the person i was listening to one of my favorite speaker that is uh, Joshua Ngirushi from South Africa and he was actually saying and emphasizing that a man can do anything to get you and a lady can do anything to get you in any path you go huh? it is like a circumference he will set every trap every trap so that he can catch you and once he catches you and gets you in his arms and does what he wants he will just leave and go and it is very true it was verified as we will going to be, be to verify it here aha what happens next verse number 6 aha so amon lay down and made himself sick and when the king was come to see him amon said unto the king i pray thee let Ta- tamar my sister come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight uh-huh. that i may eat at her hand mm-hmm. then david sent home to tamar saying go now to thy brother amon's house and dress him meat thank you sometimes we become trapped while we know nothing that is happening sometimes we become entrapped while we know nothing completely I remember uh in high school I told you you've never had experiences then definitely you don't know what life is. So in high school we usually had a competition ya kuingiza wasichana box. Do you know that how many did that competition? How many did that competition? Thank you. Thank you. Ah, kume siko peke yangu. So we used to have this competition. That is uh we go for sports. And once we go for sports we usually ask tunataka kuona nani anajua ukatia kabisa. So we are given a certain target like do you see that lady eh uh, just ensure you take a number after taking a number distribute to us after distributing to us let us do the texting and see who will win her and we said okay okay once we do that there is a prize for that and so we we took the number okay the one who went to take the number it was a very good guy he went and took the number and brought it and said ah hodau do you number said okay so so ni kucheza kama sisi he just took the number everybody went on their home the first text i texted <laughs> it was never replied the second text i texted it was never replied but one how many kujikaza so <laughs> so i texted at that time and there was a reply when inani eh I said wow powerful so I began explaining myself ulitoa wapi namba yangu so eh hiyo swali na kuanga ngumu ulitoa wapi namba yangu remember you have kaduda and uh, you can't say you got it from a whatsapp platform in fact that time i think whatsapp ndio ilikuwa nikaa inaingeingia so you were like sasa ndamwambia nilitoa wapi but again now you become ca- coming down namwambia wacha wacha story mingi si nishapata namba yako cheki There is a series of things that happened there. <laughs> there is a series of things that happened there. I, I really can't tell how it happened, but it happened there. At the end of the day you realize through communication, through communication, now the person is brought what? Is brought closer, closer. And so when we are going back to school, I was in a day school. So we are going back to school in the morning and uh, all that it was a series of weeks. And then we came and then we gathered as men and we said umefika wapi? Eh msana dai ameingia bokinyo mbaya sana eh and we said okay sawa 
So it seemed like I was the one trailing behind. And so we said, okay. Kuji patia tu moyo. Sema okay. We will look at these things. So the one who won his heart, uh, her heart was called, uh, I can't tell you the name, but uh, he won his heart and he was very boastful. And we decided, let us just award him. And so we awarded him with a very bonus credit <laughs> that we, he used all the, that long time period. And we rewarded him. But again, the second person, Kumbe Kuna Jama, Aku Katani, he just, Alikuwa na ile moyo, eh? Lazima. So he snatched the person from uh, the guy. The guy had to bring back the money. Ah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and so that is what Amnon did. They set a trap. And once they have set a trap, they took up that mantle. And the trap was what? Successful. Like the trap was very successful. He never tired until he got what he wanted. He was sick for love. And so when he did all this, as you continue down with the story, you will realize what happened is that uh, he just raped Tama. And after doing that, he never wanted to see Tama again. And so we should be careful in every decision we make. As much as something is done, we need to be super extra careful. I would like us to go to the book that is Adventist Home. Adventist Home, pages 58, paragraph 2. Adventist Home, 58, paragraph 2. Are beginning from the point whereby it says that professed Christians. Adventist Home 58 paragraph 2 uh -huh. says professed Christians uh -huh. whose lives are marked with integrity uh -huh. and, who, who, and who seem sensible upon every other subject uh -huh. make fearful mistakes here. Thank you. Make fearful mistakes here. Somebody who has been very intelligent, somebody who has been with integrity, somebody who you have been looking forward as your mentor, this is where we make expensive mistakes. Very many expensive mistakes. What does he continue further by saying? They manifest a set, Aha. Determined, a determined will that reason cannot change. They have a determined will that reason cannot change. I've focused in this way. There's no way you can tell me. There's no way you can advise me. This is where I've set everything. A good story is told of one of my friends. Uh, is one of my friends that is, that is in Nakuru. He decided to marry. Actually, he used to have a very good lady. A good lady by the by department. We usually just looked outside and uh, he would meet and tell him, my friend, Uliangukea, you had a jackpot. You had a jackpot. You hit it. And he said, yeah. Niliwambia. Skwangi mchezo. And so, they married. The best thing that he's not an Adventist. Not the best thing, but he's not an Adventist. But uh, once they were walking beside, there's a friend of his who came and told him, like, uh, this lady you're dating is not such a good kind of a person. He's not such a good kind of a person. Can you please simply change? The guy still said, Bana, unajua indio inatisha kijiji. Unajua inatisha kijiji, unajua mneza leta anything, mnidanganye tu so that I can drop it off. And so the guy never had that. The next person came and told him, by the way, the way you are trading is not a good way. But he still didn't change anything. And he was a very good person. He was somebody respected and you can uh, actually humiliate his character. And so they went ahead and wedded. They found one, uh, one kid. And once they find, uh, they give birth to one kid, that is where the problems now began hitting the family. The guy would go to work Afanye kazi, afanye kazi, and then in the evening coming only to meet a house without food. And when he asked the wife, where's the food? Kamambia, I need a maid here. Kamambia, sawa. I'm going to bring a maid. So, he said, he, he said unto her, you know my salary, majua my these things, and I cannot do this. So simply, just bear with me for these few months. Once we get to up standard, I'll definitely do that. Okay, the lady said, okay, for some while. But again, the next month, he say, she said, I need a maid. And if you're not doing this, he took the, she took the kid, went into the bedroom, took a knife, and uh, went into the bedroom. So the guy was like, please kindly, there's no need of you killing the baby. Just come, we solve this issue. 
And the lady said, okay, once I'm coming out, you're giving me money. Okay. The man said, wah, imekuwa ngumu. They came out. After coming out, the guy said, what do you really need? The lady said, I need a maid. And that is final. The man said, okay, I will look at how things are. That week, the lady continued in that trend, threatening the man. And the man said, I cannot live with this lady anymore. Because she is very hectic. But again, these are the decisions that you cannot change. They are decisions that you made and you cannot do what? Change. Because he simply did what? He was thirst for that love. He was sick for love and he never took any advice. And that is why the spiritual prophecy is warning us and telling us that once you are making these decisions, you have to make a stable decision. If you are a respected man of caliber, you need to follow the scriptures fully. The book is uh, Adventist Storm, still the same book, uh, 58 paragraph 3. Paragraph 3. Uh -huh. When one commandment of the Decalogue is broken, uh -huh. the downward steps are almost certain. Thank you. When one commandment, one commandment, only one commandment of the Decalogue is broken, the down steps are almost done what? Certain. Once you break in one point, they are certain. They will just follow each other. I just did what? I just only stole. I stole the affection of a certain lady without even the deportment of the parents. Yes, definitely you have to establish, as the speaker will explain much further, you will establish a friendship zone before informing the parents. But once you break one step, the other one will just simply follow. Once you break the Sabbath, the other ones will simply follow. When you break not to worship God, the other ones will still follow. Why? Because we are sick for love and we search for anything to fulfill the love, to fulfill that space that has been left. Remember Adam, the rib was taken from him and so he needs that rib back so that he might be mentally what? Stable. As we looked at the meaning of the word sick, he needs to be mentally stable and because he never received it, the downfall is usually following. There is a gap to be filled. There is a gap to be filled. As those uh, who usually do physics, you will realize that even the scientists, while they are coming up with all those laws, there is a law. That is, they say usually say, let's say it is a spiritual law that only binds you and God. It is a force. There is a gravitational force. There is other force. But there is a force that is attracting us unto God. Uh, continue further. The, uh, beginning from where it is written through the allurement. Uh, through the allurements of strange women, thousands are incarcerated in prison cells. Many take their own lives and many cut short their, the lives of others. This one can be simply explained in all these things. Many just, because you are headstrong and you don't want any advice, we just make things for ourselves. And that one, makes our own life to be at jeopardy. We place our own prison cells that we cannot move out of them. Just simply because we are sick for love. Sick for love. And that's why Solomon, in all these things, as he reads that is the book, let us go to the book of Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 5. He is giving a counsel unto all of us. Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 5. He is giving a counsel unto us. What does he say? Songs of Solomon 2, 5. Uh -huh. Stay with me. Uh, stay me with flagons. Three, three, fives. Sorry, three, five. Three, five of Songs of Solomon. It says, uh -huh. I charge you, uh -huh. all ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose and by the hint of the field, uh -huh. that you stir not up, nor awake my love, till he please. Do not stir up love, or awake it, till he pleases. Till it's right time. As he also writes the book of Ecclesiastes, he says the time for everything under the sun. Everything under the sun. Seek for love. There is time for everything. And as you follow one of my favorite preachers by the name Jeremiah Davis, he usually gives the steps to be followed. And these steps also you may find them in the book of uh, that is Adventist Thomas. as you read it in and expound it further. There are things to be followed. And so, all these things were sick for love. Adam fell because of the sick of love. Amnon was killed by Absalom just simply because of sick of what? Love. There are so many examples that we can have. We have Solomon, one of the weakest, uh, we can say. He was sick for what? 
love and that brought him to the very end even as we conclude let's go to the book of Ephesians Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17 Ephesians 3:17 Ephesians chapter 3 the verses number 17 aha uh -huh. and it reads mm -hmm. that Christ may dwell in your hearts uh -huh. by faith that he being rooted and grounded in love mm -hmm. may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passes which passeth knowledge that he might be filled with all the fullness of God. Thank you. Let us go to 18. 18. Uh, verses 18. It says that may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth. Actually, this is uh, Paul uh, uh, talking to the Ephesians, speaking about the love of Christ. As much as we have all these things, on, uh, these things, we know that we have many types of love. There are many types of love. But it can be divided into two. That is the vertical and the horizontal one. But in the vertical, we have the agape love. And this is what Paul emphasizes to the church of Ephesians. He's telling them that we may be able to comprehend the love of God, which will be able to explain all these things, to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth, and the heights of all these things. And that's why when uh, John is writing the book of John 3.16. He says, For God did what? So love the world. He was sick for love for the world, but in a positive dimension. He, was so, he so loved the world that he did what? He gave. He gave. I love uh, listening to preachers, and I will still quote one of the preachers that is uh, still Angirushi. He usually says that in a relationship, if you are if uh, most of the things you usually do is taking away, your part is just taking away, that love is going to do what? To die. But it means you supply it. You supply it. Once you supply it this way, you supply it this way, that love is going to do what? To be stronger. Not only one party to be contributing everything, but all of you to take part in that action. And that is why Jesus Christ says that you have a part to play, he has a part to do what? To play. As he blesses you, you have to ask for it. And that is why he's telling the children, uh, the disciples, in the book of Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be done what? Be given. There is an effort you put and there is an effort he does. And so for this sick love, it only takes away. Sick love only takes away. It never feeds itself. You only just want, but you cannot give in. Aha, uh -huh. we go to the book Adventist Home, Adventist Home, pages 59, paragraph 4. Adventist Home, 59, paragraph 4. And I would like us to read it keenly so that we may see what uh, uh, we are being told there. Adventist Home, 59, paragraph 4. 58, paragraph 3. 58, paragraph 3. 58, paragraph 3. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, it reads, from the beginning, uh, when the one commandment of the Decalogue is broken, Aha. Uh -huh. The downward steps are almost certain. Mm -hmm. When once the barriers of female modesty mm -hmm. are removed, the basest licentiousness does not appear exceeding sinful. Uh -huh. Alas, what terrible result of woman's influence for evil may be witnessed in the world today? Thank you. Up to there. <laughs> I'm not going to add much more there. Let's go to 59 paragraph 4. 59, 59 paragraph 4. 59. A little time spent in sowing your wild oats, uh -huh. dear young friends, will produce a crop that will empeter your whole life. Mm -hmm. An hour of thoughtlessness, once yielding, once yielding to temptation, mm -hmm. may turn the whole current of your life in the wrong direction. Uh -huh. You can have but one youth Mm -hmm. Make that useful. Make that useful. You can have but one youth. Make it useful. Seek for love. It is only the youthful state that we are swayed by all these tides. And I love, still I quote, I say that uh, there is a certain preacher, I still quote him. He says that learn to generalize before you specialize. The moment you will generalize all of them, you will be able to understand their kind of character. The moment you generalize all of them, you will be able to know the defect in this person, the defect in this person, and you will have to realize 
where should I shoot my what? My arrow. He still says that uh, uh, as I come to a conclusion, I can see the time is not on my side. He still says that uh, once you are having uh, that, is, that is to men. Once you, you as a man, you have ladies. Just call them, all of them girlfriends. Before you do what? You specialize. If it is a lady, have them called boyfriend. Before you do what? You specialize. Because if you specialize, before you generalize, things are going to be worse. You will never know the right person to go to. Seek for love. We need to heal ourselves from the sickness of love into the positive dimension rather than taking it in the wrong dimension, in the negative dimension. What does he complete by saying? Continue, my brother. It proceeds by saying, uh -huh. when once you've passed over the ground, uh -huh. you can never return to rectify your mistakes. Once you go over broad, you can never re do what? Rectify your mistakes. If I know, uh, I, I did this, ask this question to my dad, and I love joking with my dad most of the time, and you ask him like, Dad, if you're given a chance again to choose the wife you would take, would you take your... I will not take her. Why? Because there are things which he thought he had, she had, which are not what? Not there. I hope he never listens to this. Which are not there. If most of us were given, uh, our parents were given a chance to say if they would choose the ones, they will say they would have never done that selection. So we only have a youthful stage only once. And we can use it well or we can use it badly. And we will never rectify that. We will never. The channel you take, that is the channel you proceed with it. Uh -huh, proceed. He who, he who refuses to connect with God. He who refuses to connect with God. So the first thing we do is connecting vertically. Uh -huh. And puts himself in the way of temptation uh -huh. will surely fall. Thank you. He, refu he who refuses to connect with God. The moment you refuse to build your a relationship with God, then definitely be sure that your horizontal relationship will never stand. Once the vertical relationship is wrong, the horizontal relationship will never work at all. You may try it, but it will never work. It will never work. Mm -hmm. uh, continue. I say God is testing every youth. God is testing every youth. God is testing you. Every youth must be tested. This is the ground we are tested on. The decisions we make will either affect the life we are living now and the life we are really living what? In the future. Uh -huh. Many have excused their carelessness mm -hmm. and irreverence because of the wrong example given them by more experienced professors. Thank you. Most, it says, but many have excused their carelessness and irre uh, irreverence because of the wrong example given unto them. Uh, that elder married, uh, hey, just did uh, come, we stay. So I can simply do it. That person, ah, I used to see him coming with uh, so many girlfriends in church. He has this one, he has the other one, and all of them are comparative. I can. We have been using wrong examples and placing ourselves there, giving excuses. So, so, we are sick for love and we are giving excuses. But, what does he try to continue, my friend? But this should not deter any from right doing. Uh -huh. In the day of final accounts, you will plead no such excuses as you plead now. In the day of account, you will not plead such excuses as you do what? You do now. Yes, we are sick for love. As when you were children, you used to think like children, you used to act like children. But right now, we have become men and we need to think like men. We need to think aright. We need to think like people who are aright. Uh, we finish with the book of Songs of Solomon. Songs of Solomon 7. Songs of Solomon 7, verses 8. 
seven eight. I go, say go, go, nine, 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 nine. Verses nine. Mm-hmm. And the roof of my mouth, uh-huh. like the best wine for my beloved, mm-hmm. that goeth down sweetly, causing the lips of those that are asleep to speak. Yeah, and the roof of thy mouth, like the best wine for my beloved, that goeth down sweetly, causing the lips of those that are asleep to speak. When you read this, I know you may think it in the perspective of a lover, but this one is speaking unto the church. The church, when you go out there and speak to the people, with the wine. What the wine simply means. These are the true doctrines. While you speak to the doctrines. And they are coming out of your lips. You may save many. Who are perishing outside there. Yes we are sick for love. But. The only way. To secure true love. It is to have a strong vertical relationship. Before making. Any horizontal relationship. We have. To be. Very careful. I finish by the quote from one of my favorite uh, writers. He writes, Not everyone that turned to be poor planned for it. Not everyone that turned to be poor did what? Planned for it. It is only character that did lead him to it. Let us be careful. All the divorces we see were not planned. But it is because they never had a wise choice. I quote the pastor who was here. What did he say? He said that we take time. To do what? To select. Take time. To select. May God be with us all. Let's pray. Everlasting Father in heaven. We are sick for love. But how we pray, may you give us the love that cometh from thee above. Give us the Holy Spirit so that we may experience the best love that is the vertical one, even as we proceed with all other things that we do in this world. Thank you for being with us. And how I pray that may your Holy Spirit continue to fill our minds and to go to make us to realize that all the Decalogue need to be kept and that any thing that we make right now is going to influence our future. How I pray that may your Holy Spirit take the lead now and forevermore is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, to those who know me not, I'm Melinest Makori, a finalist, and be blessed. <laughs>